Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Maiden Abyss Season 2, but today we're going to be checking out Episode 11, the second to last episode of the season, and last time things got real intense real fast because Faputa began her bloodthirsty rampage through the Village of Hollows, massacring everyone that she saw. And she wasn't holding back at all, she slaughtered them brutally, even friggin' consuming them as she was tearing them apart. So yeah, my comparisons to the Doomslayer may not have been too far off, but I don't think even he was going around eating the demons that he was killing. At least I don't think so. But of course, Reg and Rico couldn't just sit idly by and let her destroy the village because despite the fact that Faputa, you know, is probably justified in wanting to destroy the village to, you know, free her mother from the purgatory that she's trapped in, you get why she would want to do that. At the same time, destroying the village kills everyone that's inside it, destroys their home, and renders them non-existent. Even if she wasn't going around and slaughtering them herself first, they still couldn't survive if she were to destroy the village. So Reg tried to confront her, tried to stop her from destroying everything, and he's not doing super well at that, you know? I mean, he was clearly outmatched against her in this case. She was just kind of ragdolling him a little bit. And at the same time, while he was trying to convince her to stop her massacre, she was trying to get him to remember everything that they had gone through together, and some of his memories were coming back, but he did later say that he can't remember any of the important stuff, unfortunately. Also, her means of trying to get him to remember was shoving her arm down his throat and just trying to punch her way out through his stomach, so... Don't know how effective that was going to be, but... But in the end, even after he went super with the help of Fruska and was able to overwhelm Faputa, he still couldn't find a way to convince her to stop. He held her down and just begged her to tell him what he needs to do, but... What's she gonna say? What could he possibly do to convince her? Because this is the thing that is the most important to her. It's her haku. It's what means the most to her. It's her entire reason to exist. How can you convince someone to back down from something that important? I don't know, man, but all of that violence combined with the touching flashbacks between Reg and Faputa, showing how they met and how they made their friendship, uh, it's just... It was painful. Maiden Abyss continuing to bring emotional pain through a lot of different means. But anyway, before we begin, there's just one thing I want to talk about. It's something that one of you guys pointed out to me in the comments about episode 9 that I thought was really interesting, and it's that there was a shot of Faputo, you know, where it was doing like this dramatic zoom in of her when she was looking all epic like a freaking Souls boss. Well, there was one thing about it that I didn't catch that one of you guys told me about, and it's that the light reflecting off of her claws and her horns and stuff made the symbol for Haku. Which, that's really awesome, so thank you Rusty Shackleford for pointing that out to me. Rusty Shackleford. Shackleford. But anyway, that's enough chitter chatter. Let's head in for episode 11. What do you say, guys? Come on, let's go. So, as far as episodes go, this one was uh, quite up there in terms of quality, just... Uh, Wow. Dang. <laughs> so much going on with this episode, man. Just a whole heckin' lot here. But I guess one thing I should start with is the way that they've introduced to Fapu to, you know, to get her to try to stop this and to see things from an alternate perspective. I can't even properly describe it. I'm trying here, but... Beloff's final sacrifice, just relaying his memories and his feelings to Faputa, it was a good way to try to get her to see things differently, because she was born from her mother's pain, her suffering, her desire to be free of the situation, so that's the only side of her that she ever knew was uh, the miserable life that she currently found herself in, so she never got to see her mother when she was happy. She never got to see the value she had in her life beforehand, just being with the people that she cared about. And that kind of value was right there in front of her. With Reg, with Gabu, she could have been... She could have made her value in life... them. 
just being with them, taking them on adventures, doing that kind of stuff. But the only value she could really truly hone in on was the one that she was born into. But now, thanks to Beloft's memories, even while the one thing that she vowed is being taken from her before her very eyes, she does see a potential out there. Something else that she can value. And man, just seeing her desperately try to take down all those monsters, but just standing no chance against them was... <sighs> was pain. I mean, she was getting torn apart. I mean, she barely was able to take down even a couple of them before she was just getting ripped limb from limb. So yeah, everything Fapato has endured has been tragic as hell, but hey, if she can make it to the other side of this, I think she could have a bright tomorrow. I hope, anyway. I don't want her to have to suffer unduly anymore. But then there was that other thing that Nanachi was hypothesizing about, where, you know, Wazukyan was trying to plan something way in advance. She's like, okay, this was his grandmaster plan, and she's trying to figure out exactly what he has in mind, and it, she's probably not too far off the mark, but I'm wondering how that would actually come to pass. Like, she thinks that maybe Rico would get injured in the crossfire, and then Rico, being Rico, would wish to continue adventuring forever, as she has already done on her deathbed before, but I don't know how that would result in her becoming a Irumui-esque being, just turning beings into things beyond human, because her wish would be for herself to keep adventuring, not any of them, so... Her turning into a blessing machine, I... I don't think that would be the end result of that. And Rico is already on to him anyway. She said it in a previous episode that she knows what's up. She's like, okay, I know you're gonna try to get me to use one of the wish egg things so that you can keep adventuring. She knows he's gonna try that, but the question is, is she gonna even be able to get in his way even while knowing that? Would she even want to? Who knows? And Gaburun's sacrifice, man, that broke my heart into a thousand little pieces. Because, I mean, yeah, we didn't get to spend a lot of time with the guy, but just in these moments, them fully revealing that, you know, as much as he talked all robotic and stuff, he seemed to be just as human on the inside as anybody else. I mean, he had emotions, dreams, aspirations. He said that he regretted not being able to be there to protect Faputa and to see what her Haku would become, and that all the time he spent with her was his Haku. The thing that he cherished the most was the time he spent with her, and that is so... touching. Rest in peace, man. You were really, really cool. So hey, this episode was intense on the feels, just as uh, any of the other ones we've seen in recent history. But now, Faputa has attained her own super form, so we'll see if that can give her the edge against these various monsters. But in any case, for now, I guess that's gonna be it, guys. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be updated on more. That'd be awesome. Next time, we check out the final episode of Maiden Abyss Season 2, Episode 12. And then after that, hey, maybe I can finally get started with Chainsaw Man. I just wanted to finish up Maiden Abyss first just to make sure that it, it got done, you know? But we'll see how this season all wraps up. They usually end on a very high note with Maiden Abyss, so we'll see how it goes. And I just have to comment right now about her her new design here for this super form, as I've been calling it. It looks really cool. I like the the way the colors complement each other, and the like the way the tips of her hair. It kind of looks like flames, you know, where it's like the the white and the yellow and the red. And she was talking about you know herself being a, like a fire earlier. It's come up a couple times, I think, actually, so it's very fitting. So yeah, like I said, tis it for now, guys. Thank you again for checking it out, and I hope to catch you next time for the finale of Made in Abyss Season 2. That should be out very shortly. I mean, I managed to get this one done with only, like, one day in between for the last one, so here's hoping. But for now, till we meet again, I will see you guys all later!